It has never been a better time to start your journey to become a developer, and it has never been a better time to start becoming a multi-platform developer, enabling you to develop across a wide range of mobile and desktop devices and share code with your web apps and services and so much more. .NET enables all of those scenarios, and .NET MAUI, the multi-platform app UI for .NET, enables you to build across those mobile and desktop devices. So if you're starting to look at becoming a .NET MAUI developer in 2024, I want to give you a full breakdown of everything that you need to know to start your journey. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James and I've been a long time .NET developer for almost 20 years, if not longer at this point. And I've been a .NET MAUI and Xamarin Forms and Xamarin developer beyond that for the last 13 years, building iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows applications with C Sharp, with .NET, and leveraging all the knowledge and skills that I have known for years as a C Sharp developer. And if you're starting to look at building iOS and Android, Mac, and Windows applications, and you want to do it all in C Sharp and .NET, well, I'm going to break down everything that you need to know to get started. And the first thing here is that .NET MAUI is part of .NET. Net. And by being part of .NET, it means that you can build iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows applications all inside of C Sharp and with all of your favorite .NET libraries that are out there today. C Sharp is used by millions of developers across the globe, and .NET powers some of the most powerful applications that you use every single day from Microsoft and from companies around the globe. Now, .NET MAUI is the multi-platform app UI. And what it includes is several components. There's sort of base layers that .NET MAUI includes, which is sort of the fundamental core platform support for iOS, Android, and Mac. And then .NET MAUI builds on top of that a cross-platform layer for you. Now, in addition to iOS, Android, and Mac, there's also Windows with WinUI 3, which is the latest Windows technology to build Windows applications. So you can think of it like this. You have those four building blocks. And all of those building blocks, you could go ahead and develop apps independently. Whether you're building with .NET MAUI for just iOS with native iOS UI storyboards and Android XML files and um, Mac storyboards as well, um, or over with WinUI and XAML. So you can do all that. And with .NET MAUI, you get those iOS, Android, Mac bits for .NET, and you can go ahead and access those native APIs and build those native UI controls. So you get all the packaging, all the bundling, all the support that you would expect as just as if you were developing in Swift or in Kotlin or Java or Objective-C or anything like that. Now, for .NET MAUI, though, the most important part is that it takes those base layers that are included and it builds on top of them. And it gives you cross-platform UI, app infrastructure, project support, image support, icon support, splash screen support, and it additionally gives you cross-platform access to tons of APIs directly in those native platforms. So what that means is that as a developer, you don't have to go learn the individual components. Although that is very helpful to like actually dive through the documentation when you're trying to do something specific for iOS or Android. But you can learn a single API, build out your user interface directly in C Sharp or in XAML and XML markup language, which you'll often see. You can build everything in C Sharp 100% as well. Never touch XAML if you don't want to. And there's great helper libraries out there. And then what happens is when it is running your application, it runs your .NET MAUI application in that, that sort of native host that has already been exposed. So that UI is just rendering native UI components on the different platforms, which is really, really great, which means you get just a native iOS app, which can run iOS, on iPad, uh, same thing on Android, on Android tablets, anywhere you want. And then additionally on Mac, that is a Mac Catalyst application that enables you to run your applications directly on a Mac. And then on Windows, you get a WinUI 3 application. So once you bundle up that application, you can deploy and debug anywhere that you want, whether you're on Mac, Windows, or Linux. I'll talk about the development environment here in a little bit. But on top of that, you get that UI layer. So you have a button, which would then create a UI button or an Android button or a Windows button or a Mac button. Uh, and you get one 
API that you develop against with properties and actions and events that are on it. And then you get to build out your entire user interface for your application with pages and tabs and carousels and collections and lists and tons of controls that are built directly in to .NET MAUI. Now I said also though, if we take a look at the project system, you get a bunch of other things in there as well, like cross-platform images and you get cross-platform resources for styling your application, icons, splash screens, assets, and so much more that .NET MAUI handles all together. Now, in addition to that, .NET MAUI also includes something that we often call MAUI Essentials, um, but the essential kind of toolkit is built directly into .NET MAUI. And what it does is it gives you access to tons of native APIs that are inside of the platform, such as geolocation, uh, sensors, um, compass support. Um, you also have connectivity support, email, SMS, things that often every application needs. And this is great because the .NET MAUI team has taken those APIs that are available individually that you could write inside of C Sharp. Remember those iOS, Android, and Mac sort of uh, bindings, if you will, that are enabled there, give you access to those APIs in C Sharp, but the .NET MAUI team has already abstracted tons of common things that most applications want to do. So you can take advantage of that right away in your application. So you get one API to access geolocation. And of course, if you need special functionality that only iOS or Android uh, exposes, you can still access those APIs natively. Now, finally here, what's really cool is that there is a single project support built in. So if you're building often multi-platform apps, you think you have like a platform and a project for every single one, right? Just pop, 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 pop. With .NET MAUI, everything is included in a single project inside of Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code that enables you to automatically just toggle between your deployment targets. Everything is scaffolded out for you. So if you add an image, that image is added to all platforms, which is really nice. And it means you can additionally conditionally compile code. So you can just write Android code in the Android folder, or you can write iOS code in the iOS folder. And that is super duper nice. So at a high level, that is what .NET MAUI is. It enables you to build multi-platform applications. And it's also interface base, which means other platforms can adopt .NET MAUI. So for example, Samsung adopted .NET MAUI for their Tizen platform. So when you actually create a new .NET MAUI project, you get Tizen support built in. If you want to deploy to Tizen devices, you can do that. So that at a high level is what .NET MAUI is. But let's talk about what's new in .NET MAUI that you need to know in .NET 8. All right, let's talk about what's new in .NET 8 for .NET MAUI developers. Now there is tons that were built in. This is a big stability release, a long-term support release or LTS, you often hear it called. And there's tons of performance improvements. Now remember .NET MAUI is integral in integrated into .NET itself, which means that when you're getting new features of C Sharp, you're getting improvements in .NET itself, you are bringing those into your .NET MAUI applications automatically. Now, on top of that, the .NET MAUI team spent a lot of time specifically focusing on a bunch of different quality improvements, um, going ahead, ensuring that things just lay out and perform better and optimize on the latest releases. And there are tons of quality improvements here and tons of new support for things like keyboard accelerator, uh, point gesture recognizers, um, drag and drop recognizers for desktop and mobile devices. And you can see it here running directly onto the iOS as well. So you get these nice, beautiful drag and drops and you get tons of performance and memory optimizations too. So here, for example, we can actually scroll through Jonathan Pepper's beautiful blog post of all of the different support that has been built in, not only new features such as native AOT to, uh, for iOS, um, stripping IL after AOTing on Android and marshalling methods. You also get all of these amazing performance and app size improvements, handling and fixing a bunch of memory leak issues and so much more. This is really cool because you can see in detail exactly before and after app size um, um, of enabling these different features. And he goes deeper into a lot of the intricacies of how all this works under the hood. So if you're interested in all of that, give it a look. But what you can see the team is driving for is specifically bringing down the app size while improving and speeding up 
the startup time. So here, for example, we see the older AOT and the new native AOT features of iOS dramatically dropping down those different startup times. So that's something to take a look at. And there's a great blog post, and I'll link to all of this today. What's really great is that it's super easy with the .NET installer, just a simple workload. And one of my favorite features that I talked about in a previous video was that now with .NET 8 and .NET MAUI, you can more easily pin the version number that you want to use of .NET MAUI. Previously, it was just whatever .NET 6, 7, 8 that you had installed, and that's still the default. But you can go in and override that, and you can configure a NuGet feed that the .NET MAUI team uses. So you can use the default one or you can opt into nightly builds, which is super duper cool. So that means if you're looking to get started with .NET 8 and .NET MAUI, now is the perfect time to jump all in and get ready. Now, one thing that you may um, be wondering is what if I'm an existing Xamarin Xamarin Forms developer? What do I need to know? Well, there are a few subtleties between obviously .NET MAUI with a single project and some of the new defaults that are in the box. And then additionally, kind of some bundling and, and optimizations that the teams have. But a lot of your existing knowledge, of course, of all C Sharp and that XAML or C Sharp Xamarin Forms knowledge will come over. There are some tweaks and tunes to the properties and the events, but in general, you'll feel very comfortable. Now, if you are coming from an existing Xamarin or Xamarin Forms project, you might be saying, well, how do I upgrade? Well, there's the Upgrade Assistant. I have a video right here on my YouTube that walks you through the process of taking an existing Xamarin Forms app and migrating it over to .NET MAUI. I'm doing that for my production applications. I've been doing live streams here, actually showing how I am taking my real live production applications with all the dependencies, not just file new, and walking you through it. Now, on top of that, though, the team has a great guide. Over here, we can see what project type did you have and how do you bring it forward? So if you have an Android, iOS, Mac, or tvOS application, it'll show you how to bring it forward and upgrade it to .NET 8. Additionally, here, it will show you how to bring over a Xamarin Forms project, and you can use a multi-project or that single project. Now here, this will walk you through the process of everything that you need to know and how to upgrade it. There is manual kind of process that you can use, or you can use the Upgrade Assistant, which is a tool via the command line or built directly into Visual Studio 2022. Now, in addition here, there are many other projects that you might have, like app extensions, Android Wear applications, binding projects, and so much more, and you can easily bring them over. So this is really easy to do and take advantage of it um, and get up and running um, if you have an existing app. Now let's talk about where you will be developing. When you're actually naturally getting started with .NET MAUI, you're like, hey, I need to install something to get started, and that is correct. Now, I mentioned earlier that you can develop on Windows, Mac, or on Linux, and there are different flavors of what you can develop on those different platforms. Let's first talk about the IDE support. There are specifically multiple IDEs that support .NET MAUI, both from Microsoft and additionally from other companies as well. So first off, the IDE that I use the most, or the integrated development environment, um, is Visual Studio 2022. There's a free community edition that you can use to build .NET MAUI applications. And uh, there's other pro and enterprise versions as well if your company has that. And Visual Studio 2022 basically enables you to develop all sorts of different applications, whether it's .NET applications, C++, Python applications, uh, Unity games, anything like that. There's amazing support built in for building these applications, bringing them to the cloud, and doing so much more. It's my favorite IDE. I've been using it for decades at this point. I absolutely love it. And there's world-class support for .NET MAUI inside of Visual Studio 2022, including hot reload support, live visual trees, live previews, um, template support, IntelliSense support, so much more that you could imagine when building your application. And, and it's a premier experience when you're doing so. Now, when you're building on Windows with Visual Studio 2022, the scenarios are that you'll be able to easily deploy, obviously, to your Windows device, to an Android uh, emulator or physical device. And then additionally, there's a piece of technology called iOS Hot Restart, or as I like to call it, iOS Local Deployment. This enables you to plug an iPhone directly in to your Windows machine. And as long as you have an Apple developer account, you can automatically deploy and debug that debug developer build on your iOS device. I have a whole video here showing you how to do that. 
And then additionally, if you do have a Mac machine, you can actually remotely connect your Windows machine to your Mac machine, and that will enable you to debug on an iOS simulator. There's also a remoted iOS simulator, so an iOS simulator can pop up onto your Windows machine, or you can have it pop up on your Mac machine, or you can plug in an iOS device into your Mac machine. Lots and lots of options. It's very, very flexible in that regard. Now, beyond that, there is Mac support and Linux support as well with Visual Studio Code. Now, previously we had Visual Studio for Mac, but that has been um, retired um, based on when you're watching this. It still may be active or coming up for retirement. So going forward, looking in 2024, the place that I would start would be Visual Studio Code. Now, this, of course, has .NET MAUI support for Windows, Mac, and Linux. And if you look at the installation guide here, we'll see the Visual Studio Code. Now, as I'm recording this, the extension is still in preview, but the team is actively working on this, and I expect it to GA hopefully soon here. But once you install Visual Studio Code, you get the .NET MAUI extension, which includes the C-Sharp Dev Kit and the C-Sharp extension. So you get all those goodies built right in. Now, what this means is that if you're on Windows, you'll be able to deploy to Windows and Android devices. It doesn't have that hot restart or local deployment option or pair to Mac, but you can still de debug locally to your Windows and Android devices. Now, if you're over on Mac, you have a little bit of flexibility because you'll be able to deploy to Android, to iOS, and to Mac, which is really nice because you're on a Mac machine. You have iOS, you'll need to install Xcode over there, of course, to get the iOS simulators, and you'll have some additional setup for Android, like installing Android Studio and that uh, different um, emulators and SDKs and things. And then on Linux, there is support for developing Android applications because Google has the Android SDKs and emulators available. What's great here is that this walks you through everything that you need to know to actually install Visual Studio Code and all of .NET 8 and the .NET MAUI workload. Here's on Mac OS, everything that you'll need, including Xcode, the JDK, and installing .NET MAUI over here as well. And on Linux, same thing, all of the different pieces that you will need to get up and running. Now, Visual Studio Code, because it's a lightweight code editor, doesn't give you like a one-click install everything. Visual Studio 2022 does. There's literally a button that says, give me .NET MAUI, and it installs everything for you automatically. If you're coming from VS Code, there's a little bit more setup. However, the extension does handle walking you through the process very, very nice. So definitely check that out there. Now I mentioned there's also additional IDEs that you can use. Of course, Visual Studio for Mac is still supported up until a time frame um, based on when you're watching this video, but also JetBrains has Rider, which is a multi-platform uh, IDE as well that has .NET MAUI support built in. So no matter where you want to develop or what you want to develop on, there are options for you, and there's gonna be a great experience to build those multi-platform apps. Hey, if you're enjoying this at all and you're excited for more .NET MAUI and .NET content, make sure you thumbs up this video. It really helps the channel and helps this video and more people find it. And if you're interested in more, like I said, jam on that subscribe button so you get updated every time I put out a video right here on my YouTube. One thing that has come a long way, just given time, is the amazing ecosystem that has built up around .NET MAUI. That means if you're starting development right now in 2024, you have an amazing collection of different UI components and 2D and 3D graphics engines that you can just pull directly into your .NET MAUI application from different control vendors or from the community. Additionally, there's a vast amount of different plugins that you can take that access native capabilities in addition to MAUI Essentials. One great place to start is the awesome .NET MAUI repo from Javier, who's an engineer on the .NET MAUI team. This gives you not only great resources like contents and books and workshops, gives you all these great samples if you just want to see like, hey, what does a podcast app look like or a planet application look like or a YouTube player look like? There's full workshops. There's different tools that you can go ahead and pull down. And there's different components as well for the UI. So here we have like a you know, community toolkit. We have these acrylics. We have Aloha kit. We have carousel views, maps, um, color pickers, um, different control types, uh, UI testing, different panes that are in here, uh, virtual lists. Uh, my favorite might be this live chart, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. That gives you all these beautiful charts and graphs that are all built in, just absolutely stunning. And there's all sorts of different ones built in right here. And you can just browse through, find some, add your own if you're building some as well. So if there's something that you're looking to add to your app, it's probably around. 
Additionally here, there's plugins. So here's things like camera and some um, 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 in-app billing and bindings and shake detectors and data forms and page resolvers and audio and recorders and local notifications. All of these are all built in so you can just grab them. Some are really small doing one specific thing or some are really large. For example, Shiny is one of my favorite libraries that gives you access to Bluetooth, um, gives you to um, access to local push notifications, uh, beacon support, geofencing, background jobs, and so much more. So there's tons of built in there. Now, in addition to that, I mentioned the .NET MAUI Community Toolkit. And this is uh, an official uh, community toolkit from Microsoft and from the community combined up under the Community Toolkit brand. Now, you can also leverage the .NET Community Toolkit and the MVVM Community Toolkit, which is one of my favorites as well. But this gives you all sorts of things, such as alerts, like toasts and snack bars, animations, behaviors that are built in here. You have different uh, pickers, like folder and file picker and speech to text. You have extensions, like keyboard extensions, image sources, layout like doc layouts, views that are in here, like a lazy view and expander, drawing views. And of course you have the amazing C sharp markup, which really simplifies going in and writing C sharp first user interface. So all sorts of amazing things inside the .NET MAUI community toolkit. I absolutely love it. It's essential to every application. But I mentioned great components from vendors as well. So Telerik, for example, has an amazing toolkit for .NET MAUI, giving you just about everything that you could possibly want. Inside of here, just so many controls, charts, pickers, uh, slide views, borders, everything that you can imagine, accordions. Syncfusion also has a beautiful array of .NET MAUI controls that you can just plug directly directly into your .NET MAUI application. They're continuing to build that out. We have component one as well, enabling you to drop in tons of amazing components directly into your application. You have Grail Kit, which enables you to have a fully themed application. This is one of the premier ways of building Xamarin Forms apps and now for .NET MAUI as well. They have Grail Studio, they have all sorts of amazing stuff, just absolutely stunning to pull into your application. There's so much more. Uh, Dev Express, for example, is a free toolkit as well. Just so much great stuff built in. But there's great stuff from the community. I mentioned earlier, we took a look at the live charts. Aloha Kit from Javier again is amazing. Uh, uh, different uh, layout here. It even has like a Figma to Aloha Kit uh, conversion UI kit, which is cool. There's template Maui, which gives you templated controls. So you can easily um, build out uh, your own templated controls library here with all sorts of different things built in. He has an animation library for it as well to do things such as like bounce in, flip, rotate, scale, all sorts of things really easily directly from XAML or from C Sharp. And not to mention, there's a full 2D graphics library built directly into .NET MAUI with MAUI Graphics. This gives you all sorts of different 2D graphics built in the box. You have a full canvas that natively renders out. So you have all the different shapes that you can build over here. So if you want to do, um, um, you know, different strokes, ellipses, geometries, lines, paths, polygons, those are all available. So you can pretty much build out anything. Now, in addition to Maui graphics, there's also support for Skia Sharp, and there's, of course, Skia Sharp for .NET Maui controls. There's tons of amazing things that can be built with both Maui graphics and Skia Sharp that have been out there today. So, so much, tons of great stuff, and this really supports just about anything. So, no matter where you want to develop and deploy, you can go ahead and do that there. Now, in addition to that, I said there's also 3D game engines. Uh, Jorge over here um, from the uh, Plain Concepts team built something called Evergen, which gives you 3D graphics that you can just plug directly in to your application. It works pretty much everywhere. So it has um, PBR rendering, it's component-based. It gives you a full physics em engine for simulations, post-processing, uh, particle effects, and so much more. And he walks you through how to add just a single line of code to get that up and running. And then as you walk through, you'll see that you'll be able to not only create a new Evergen project, but you can bring in your 3D assets, your things directly into your .NET MAUI application with that single deployment here. And here we go. You're able to bring in those assets automatically. And there's great samples as well, such as the uh, Ever Sneaks, which is a beautiful 3D graphics application. Now, on top of that, um, Javier, again, um, has been working on Rive, which is a uh, runtime to do 3D and 2D animations as well. You can take a look at uh, Rive over here for .NET MAUI, which is really cool, just enabling you to go ahead and bring those in to your application.
Now, finally, I want to mention that there's tons of great places to get started. I told you the awesome .NET MAUI, but Javier also has the .NET MAUI showcase of different UI examples built from Microsoft, from the community, and from different companies as well. So you can just browse through here and take a look, and you can find all of the different source code directly on GitHub for these different projects. So you might be looking to start something off, and you're like, hey, this is kind of interesting. I want to build something like that. You can go ahead and get inspired and see how these applications were built. So there's tons of different applications that are stunning with great animations that are ready to go as an example of great, beautiful .NET MAUI applications all ready to go. And I just love scrolling through these and seeing them all the time. So there is an amazing ecosystem in and around .NET MAUI for you to take advantage of today. And I just mentioned some of these things. I'll try to add links to every single thing in the show notes below so you can tap on them and explore them more. Now you might be saying, James, I'm a web developer. I don't want to learn a bunch of XAML or building UIs in C Sharp. I'm a Blazor developer. I want to leverage my Blazor knowledge and build hybrid applications. And the answer is with .NET MAUI, there's amazing hybrid support built in. It has full support for Blazor Hybrid, which enables you to reuse your Blazor components directly into a .NET MAUI application. That means that you can then build your Blazor web application and share those components and host them inside of a native .NET MAUI application and deploy to iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. So you can share a vast amount of your UI and your logic and still access native capabilities of those devices. What's great is that when you bring in those components, it's going to use the native web controls on the different platforms, but you have the ability to mix and match native UI and web UI directly in this hybrid application. I have a video here walking you through everything you need to know to get started with Blazor Hybrid today. And additionally, there's lots of experiments that the team are doing to bring in other types of web uh, technologies into .NET MAUI itself. There's an experiment called the Hybrid Web View, which I also have a video here on my channel that walks you through everything that you need to know to bring in things just like just normal HTML and CSS and JavaScript, or bring in Angular or React directly into your application. So if you're looking to build hybrid applications with .NET MAUI, it's built directly right in, and you're totally good to go. Now you're saying. James, I'm ready to dive in. Let's do this. I want to start learning .NET MAUI. Where do I go? Well, there are amazing resources available. One that I get to work on at work at Microsoft uh, is Microsoft Learn, which I love, which are in free interactive self-guided modules. So this enables you to go through and learn about creating UI, layouts in XAML, building shared resources, multi-page applications, consuming REST, working with SQL databases. This gives you a full walkthrough and exercise base. So you learn about it and then you do it. You learn about it, then you do it. And the first activity you built an entire phone number translator application. It walks you through everything that you need to know from adding the logic to adding the UI and how to get everything set up on your machine. And by the end, you have a full application that can run on any of the different platforms, which is really, really neat. Now, if you're more of a visual learner and you like to follow along to videos, well, there's tons of great content. The .NET team has tons of beginner video series for all of .NET. So if you're looking to just learn .NET or C Sharp, want to mix in a little AI, you have it over there. Here we also can see that we have full Blazor hybrid. That's me right there, full walkthrough, and other things like C Sharp and Visual Studio or VS Code. And we also have my .NET MAUI beginner series too. These are amazing resources to get you up and started building a .NET MAUI application and learning MVVM and data binding and navigation and everything that you could imagine. I also mentioned here that we have Blazor Hybrid. So if you are coming in, there's a full Blazor Hybrid getting started beginner videos that will walk you through everything. So there's a nice and bite size. You got eight minutes, 15 minutes. It's gonna get through this in an hour or so, and you're gonna be off and running, have some general knowledge. Now, I will say on my YouTube, one of my most popular videos here with over 600,000 views is my full beginner's course to learn .NET MAUI. This is a four hour long beginner workshop that will take you from start to finish in building .NET MAUI applications. You learn just about 
everything that you need to know from the basics of 100 and 200, and then you can go off and learn more. Now, there are great resources here, of course, on my YouTube. So if you want to go a little bit further and you want to learn more about just really, really basics, I have a full beginner a tutorial. I have uh, more videos on Blazor Hybrid, on MVVM, data binding and scaffolding and so much more. It's all there. Now, I mentioned that workshop, and this is the workshop that you actually go through over here. So as you scroll down, we can see there's six different parts of that four hour workshop, and it takes you through not only setup, but here it also takes you through single page list of data, MVVM and data binding, navigation, platform features, collection view, and theming your application. So there's tons of things built right in there. Now, finally, I'll leave with this one, which is uh, Gerald's amazing learn.net Maui repo. And again, I'll put links in the show notes below. He has this great setup of learning resources. So if you're interested in blogs, books, code, social media, videos, and others, so let's say, Hey, I just want to watch a bunch of videos. Where should I go? He walks through the bit, the main, uh, official channels and YouTubers and Twitch streamers that are doing a bunch of cool stuff and a bunch of LinkedIn learning material as well. You're like, hey, I'm really interested in books, whether written or ebooks. You can scroll through and take a look at all the books that are available today in English or even non English books as well, which is really, really cool. So you have all that available right away. If you're looking for people to follow, well, don't worry. He's got a great list of people to follow, official and non official, wherever they are at on GitHub or on Twitter, wherever you're at. So definitely take a look at that. And he has great other links here too of all the learn live videos, learning paths, documentation, and so much more. So definitely, if you're looking to get started with .maui today, there's amazing resources to give you everything that you need. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how .NET enables you to really build and deploy for anything. We've talked a lot about .maui, how it enables you to build for mobile and desktop, for iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows, leveraging those native platforms underneath that it gives you access to in .NET. But with .NET, of course, you can build for anything, whether it's games, whether it's AI, whether it's web services, cloud native services, IoT devices, and so much more. And for me, using .NET Maui, which I adore, I often build out sometimes just mobile apps for iOS and Android, sometimes just desktop apps for Windows and Mac, and sometimes all four. And sometimes I have hybrid applications where I'm sharing stuff with the web. It is giving me the flexibility for my applications. But I recognize, probably you recognize, the community recognizes that every application, every customer, every company, every scenario is different, which means that you need something that will fit your needs. And the great part here is that .NET is really flexible and there are amazing things from Microsoft and from other companies and from the community that enable you to build for even more platforms based on what you need. So while I think .NET Maui is perfect for me, if there are other requirements that you have, for example, maybe you do need to deploy onto Linux, or maybe you have a requirement that I need to deploy on every single thing from one code base, and that's the only thing my boss is gonna let me do, and I want flexibility to go everywhere, I want the web, I want this and that, there is something out there for you. There are amazing frameworks like Avalonia UI, which enables you to build out those cross-platform applications with .NET, leveraging those core underlying platforms, just like .NET MAUI is built on top of and part of, gives you access to that. Uh, Avalonia has been around for a long time, and it is sort of proven on the WPF app model. And they have a really cool service like the XPF app that enables you to take a WPF app and move it forward over there. So definitely check out Avalonia UI, and they have great integration to all your favorite IDEs. If you are coming from the Windows world, the Uno team enables you to build, again, cross-platform apps that run on a bunch of different uh, uh, platforms and hardware and different integrations into different editors as well. Uno, though, is built with WinUI first in mind. So that is what it gives you. So if you're coming from a WinUI approach, they take that and they translate it over into the different platforms. So it gives you that unification as well. Now, note though that every single platform is a little bit different. You know, .NET MAUI took the approach of using and leveraging native controls when it's a default rendering system. Now, of course, you can build your own controls like we've seen as well that do all sorts of things, including custom drawing. Whereas Avalonia and Uno do more of a custom drawing system for more of a pixel identical system per 
um, operating system that it's running on. So based on what you need, different accessibility options, different styling options, different background of what you're used to, know that with .NET, you have that flexibility. I love .NET MAUI, I love .NET, and I think no matter what framework you're using and you're building with, there is amazing potential in 2024 and beyond as new versions are released of all this amazing frameworks that are out there for you. That's my 2024 update and overview for .NET MAUI development. I hope that you found this video insightful, enjoyable, just a little bit. And if so, make sure you give it a thumbs up, jam that subscribe button as well. I really appreciate it. I look forward to putting out more videos right here on my YouTube. So until then, happy coding. Show me all of your awesome .NET MAUI applications that you're building below in the comments. If you have any questions, write down there as well. So until next time, thanks for watching.